Hey everybody, I'm John and I do a lot of van videos, but <clears throat> I'm actually gonna start doing some Land Cruiser videos as I fix up my fleet of rusty Land Cruisers. Today, I wanna talk to you about rebuilding the climate control, AC, HVAC, whatever you wanna call it. This is out of a 94 uh, FCJ80. I believe these are pretty similar and used in a number of the 80 series vehicles. It may differ slightly, but I think they're all fairly similar. Um, I'm not gonna go over getting this thing out. You've basically gotta take the entire lower dash out, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's easier than you think. It's a little bit fiddly, but it probably takes about 20 minutes. Uh, there's a number of things online if you wanna look up how to pull that dash out, it's really not that difficult. Um, what I did is I, when I went in to fix this, as I pulled the dash out, I cleaned everything, I repainted everything. It's just if you're gonna have everything in pieces, you might as well clean it up. Anyway, um, Rebuilding this. Now you'll notice there are some, uh, there's an option missing. There's a blank. That's the auto, which is also on the back. You'll see this switch that says M and A. That's manual and auto. If you don't have auto, you want it in manual. Um, I bring up that switch because that will make a difference later. It's why I'm doing this video because there are some uh, idiosyncrasies, we'll say, uh, to how this goes back together. Now I'm going to switch over here and start my teardown. All right, hopefully you all can see that. I'm gonna do my best to kind of show everything to the camera. So <clears throat> when you first pull this out, there's going to be some clear adhesive on the side here. I'm guessing that's just Toyota's uh, way of um, either keeping dust out of those slots or seeing if you've actually been in here mucking around for warranty reasons. So when I was done with mine, I actually just took some good old fashioned uh, electrical tape and you can cover those back up. Um, I've also got some clear tape, which is actually a little bit more factory. It's about the almost the exact same width. So if you're really going for that factory look and you want things to be um, back the way they are from the factory, there are some adhesives here. So I peeled those off. And the first part of disassembling this is fairly straightforward. You've got a clip here and then you on top, and then you can come back here, got a clip on the bottom. And of course, as you undo one clip, the other one tends to want to undo as well. It's also handy to have a flathead screwdriver, tools for this flathead, Phillips, some sort of dental pick or a little tool is handy for prying some of these things up. All right, so that pops off. Pretty run of the mill there. Now you're gonna get to kind of where your circuit boards are. Don't freak out. This stuff's all pretty, uh, pretty simple to work on. If you need to change your lights or anything, we'll get down into the lights. You can already see some bulbs here. I haven't actually tried to take these out because my lights were working. Um, let's see if those come out with a twist like the other. I'm gonna do the low budget way of doing this thing. Maybe I can get it with my fingers. Yep, just twist. And then I'll use these little things to pull it out. So there's your bulb. This is also can be, I think all these bulbs are pretty much the same. The um, famous D light that goes out, the drive light that goes out on your uh, gauge cluster. I believe all of these are interchangeable. So these lights, one, two, three. These are what uh, are the lights for the whole thing. They're not the on off lights for when a button is pressed. Okay. And that's just, I believe, a little bit of a turn to get the lock in place. All right. So now we're going to go about taking the circuit board off. We can start by flipping over and taking off more of the plastic. Nice thing about this is there's a clip on the side and the side. Again, super easy to take apart. Pop that clip pop that clip and this whole face comes off. It's a really good opportunity if you wanna clean this up, get all the dust out of it. You could even tape this sticker off and respray this if you wanted to really clean it up for anyone kind of restoring their 80. Once you've got the front, now what you wanna do is grab this uh, temperature slider and pull straight out. And you can see it's got a little glass fin on it. That's so that the light from these three can glow through and light up that little strip. Now, when you're putting this back in, that strip goes up, okay? Now, I have a little tray. I'm gonna put all the little parts in. So now we're pretty much stripped down. Uh, if you do, for whatever reason, wanna take the switches off, you can do that now. It's pretty easy. Again, a little tool here. There, uh, There's a clip on the top and a clip on the bottom. I go under one of the corners and just kind of pop up and they just kind of pop right off. Just right under this corner, not hard, just a little light pressure on the bottom right of the thing and it will pop off. This is the blank switch. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, but if you wanna take off your switches, maybe replace one that's really worn or clean them up, you can do that. 
Going on to the back of the assembly, this is where you're going to start to need uh, your Phillips. So there's three screws, one, two, sorry, you couldn't see it, one at the top, two at the bottom. We're going to take those out. All right, those screws are out. Now these circuit boards, there's two layers to them. There's a top and a bottom. They're held in, the top one is held in by this uh, little uh, plastic living hinge clips. Same, and the bottom one is held on by this. So the first thing you're gonna do to get this upper one is you're gonna take one side and kind of just lift it out. See how I lifted that? It's no longer in the catch. And there's a little bit of light pressure. Now you wanna be delicate. These are old electronics old circuit boards. So if something's not going, don't just wrench on it. Go slow and gentle. Okay. So now we're off there. And then now I'm going to warn you about this. Be very, very gentle and don't stab it in. I'm using a flathead, which I probably shouldn't use, but I'm just trying to work that thing out of the clip. There we go. Very, very gentle with that. I'm just getting this circuit board up out of this plastic. Incredibly light amount of pressure. Now, once you get this first circuit board, you can kind of slowly, these wires are what's keeping it from standing up. So just be very gentle. Again, these things are not brand new. So there's three things you want to worry about here that you can see now. These standoffs or spacers, these are loose. Don't lose them. You've also got a spacer up there, this white spacer. That'll come out as we pull this out. So now, the only thing holding this in at this point are some detents in the actual buttons and then these snap fits on the side. So now what I like to do is start on this side with this gap, which I believe is where the temperature sensor for the auto goes. I'll lever this slightly. And then as I lever this, again, being very gentle, somebody might have better tools out there, but I'm gonna lever this up very, very gently as I, again, gently lever this plastic off. Okay, that side popped, now we'll go over. And what I'm gonna do now is slide this along the bottom while I lever this side off gently. I'm not even really leveling, I'm levering, I'm just using the spacing. Okay, there you go, you heard that little pop. So now, this whole thing, see how it's out of that slot and out of that slot? So I'm grabbing it back here and you wanna kinda of work the whole thing out. Now there's nothing holding in it except the detents on the switches. So it should come straight out now. There we go. And some things may come with it, some may not. This one, because I took that, I popped that switch off, it actually took the switch with it. See, this is what I talk about, the detents. The switches actually have, and that held this in, but I'll take that out and talk about that in a second. Okay. So these switches have these little grabbers and you can see all of these things have these little uh, ridges that these click onto, right? So what happens is those little teeth grab this and what that does is that's how the button stays down because when you push this down, see how those stay down? So if that stays down, it holds the button in, okay? And that's important later. But once we're in here, now you can see this is the actual board where the lights are. You've got three lights, one, two, and three back in there. Those are the ones that we saw from this side, remember? Now you don't need to take these, this out to replace those lights. Those See these holes here? You can pull that right out. These lights for the actual switches are soldered in. I have not replaced any of those. So um, I'm also absolutely terrible at soldering. I don't know why. I can weld quite well and I can't solder to save my life. So these uh, lights have long uh, wires that go to them and those are soldered into the back. Let's see if I can get my tool. Oh, here's this other spacer I wanna talk about. That white one on the top. So we're gonna let that fall into our hand there. Don't lose that. So here you can see these pairs 
that's a light up here. That's a light. Sorry. That's a light up there. That's a light. That's a light. So if you want to replace those lights, uh, I'm sure there are people that have done it. I have not done it, so I won't give a tutorial on something I haven't done. Uh, anyway, the important thing to worry about here is not important thing, but thing I want to talk about is this right here. This is what's under that blank. It's your auto switch. This caused me no end of headache when I took this apart. So if your vehicle has auto, going back together should be no problem. But if your vehicle doesn't have auto like mine, okay, see how these, can you see that? When you put, see how one's lower than the other? These, you're selecting where your air is routed. It should go in and stay in. But if you have auto, which means that the vehicle is going to select where the temperature goes, when you, it mechanically releases all of those buttons See how they're all the same height now? So what happens is when you reassemble it, this blank plate, again, those little fins, pushes on that and pushes it in, but it never pops over like it needs to because this button has a blank, which means it's not pressable, which all it does is hold that auto button down, which means these buttons stay unselectable when that's down. See if I hold that down and push these different buttons, they don't select. That was the problem I was running into and the reason I made this video. And I'll show you how to deal with that as we reassemble everything. So do whatever you need to do. In my case, I wanted to switch boards because I had one that had lights that work. This one's got an AC light that's out, etc. Looking at this is what's left of the housing at this point. So these things are basically light diffusers. So they take those three bulbs. It's pretty cool. They take those three bulbs, and instead of having a bright spot on the front of this, these diffuse the light. So the way this works, you've got a socket right there, which is what that light uh, light bulb sits in. And when it lights up, it disperses that light all the way through this plastic. And what that's going to do, as I get this back in, theoretically, Are you too good for your home? Okay, so see, this is gonna light up that temperature sensor. And then you see this bottom area where these windows and these lights get lit up. This sticks through in every switch. So you have one up here. Now, if you don't get these back in the right spot, your circuit board's not gonna go on properly. Your lights, your, your buttons aren't gonna work. So the important thing here is these things just set in place. See, there's a little, See this little notch right here? There's one over here too. So when you're putting this back in, there's the little, see the little teeth right there? Let me hold this down so I can show you. See these little teeth right here? Those fit in that notch. So that's when you know you have it in the right spot. So again, that notch right there, this thing fits so that those teeth go right in that notch. And then once it's in there, you'll feel it's kind of stable. Same thing here. There's also little teeth on this one right there. They go in a notch right there. Okay, those just set in there, nothing holds them in. When you're reassembling the circuit board, these four holes, one, two, three, four, are what go over these posts. One, two, three, four. So. If you get this one notch over, which is what I did, it's now not in the right spot. This thing will not line up with the circuit board and it'll screw things up. So make sure you've got that. It can be just a little bit to the right of it and feel like it's in the right spot. Make sure you're in that notch. Okay, so if you wanna take any of the buttons out, again, we go back to this. Let's take um, one of these buttons out up top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lever that bottom corner. It pops out. Now this button, if I take this thing out, this button carrier can slide out of the back. So if you need to replace an entire button or just a button face or take the buttons out for any reason, that's how you do it. When they go back in, make sure that this top square is for your light. The top square is for your light. And these little teeth are for grabbing on to these switched ovens. So when you're reassembling this, you want those teeth towards the interior of the display. 
and the light surround at the top. So I'm gonna leave that button in, so I'm gonna put the cap back on. Okay, so when it comes to reassembly, again, this switch blank now has to stay out and I'll explain why. But if you try to reassemble it with the switch blank in, those top buttons will not work. So I'm gonna put this back in. Again, the part that carries the light goes on the top and the teeth face towards you. We're gonna put this back in. It's gonna find its little home with its teeth. We're gonna put the temperature, light disperser, diffuser, whatever the proper name is back in. So this is a basically properly assembled display with the exception of the switch blank. Now to put this back together. Again, we're gonna be careful because of the age of all of these parts. So we're gonna, the first thing we gotta do is clear these side latches. Okay, so we got that, we got that. So now we're just gonna push evenly straight down. If you get a ton of resistance or something, check to make sure that all your, your um, posts are in the right place. Can you see here that all those diffusers have now found their home, one, two, three, and four, so we're in the right spot. And I'm gonna press not on the soldering because A, that'll hurt your finger, and B, um, we don't wanna mess up any wires. I'm gonna push right where these nubs are and push this whole assembly down. Feel the click. Okay. And now real quickly, you can test that everything's working with that first one clicked. Your temperature slider. So you see the AC goes in and stays in. The air circulation goes in, stays in. Now here's where we've got a problem, right? So notice these should go in and stay in. Why are they not doing that? Well, it's because this is pushing that auto button. This needs to get pressed down. This is why we can't have the blank on it when we reassemble it. Because if the blank is on it, it does not allow this button, the switch carrier to go down. If I push this down, see how it clicked into place? Now look, now they all work. Now they stay down, hold down. So this, is your auto button. And since we don't have a button, we have a blank, this still needs to be able to travel when you reassemble it, it needs to be pushed down, otherwise your top buttons won't work. That was a huge pain in the A for me to figure out, <laughs> but it did, so now I'm telling you. So once that is on, we can put this blank switch back on. Now notice once the blank is on, you can't press it, okay? So now going back to this side, we've got that bottom circuit board in, we've gotta lever this top one up why? Because we've got to put this spacer over this black barrel right here. Can you see that? It's got to fit over that. So we've got to kind of lever this whole thing up. And again, we're going to be delicate when we do all this stuff. Okay. And then we've got our two standoffs. Remember these little white loose standoffs or spacers? Those are gonna go back in. You got two little holes for them. Right above the, first one's right above that screw hole. Second one over there. So we've got our standoffs in. So now we're gonna press this down. And before we add any screws, we're gonna make sure that this thing finds its home. Okay, so now we've got this board all back in with the exception of the screws. So these three screw holes again, one top and two down. And they don't need to be super tight. These are electronics. You don't want to over tighten something and snap something and you're screwing steel screws into plastic. So again, gentle. We're not throwing much of torque on these. Okay, that's done. So now we can flip over to the front. Now before we put that face plate on, we're gonna to wanna to take 
our temperature slider again with the strip facing up. And this thing, it's got a little thing that runs in that, see how it's two prongs? It just sets on top, slides all the way down. Then we're gonna put our faceplate back on. That's pretty easy because it just clicks into place. Flip it over. Now we've got this. This is pretty easy because it just clicks into place. Theoretically, anyway. That's all back together. Now, if you want, you can add some tape to cover up those edges so we don't get a bunch of dust and dirt from four wheeling and all the awesome trails you're gonna hit going in the side of this thing. But outside of that, you're pretty much good to go. So hopefully this video has helped you uh, being able to tear your climate control apart. And if you wanna replace those uh, main uh, lights with LED bulbs or anything like that, you can. If you wanna replace the individual lights for the switches, uh, that's gonna take some soldering and a little bit more work than I did in this video. But hopefully this helps you uh, be able to repair your climate control system for your 80 series.